Happy Wednesday, this is Mike here in the LabSciDy R&D Lab, and we're going to go over some hump day hacks. So today's hack, we're going to talk about vacuum pumps. We're going to talk about utilizing the correct vacuum pump for the correct application. There's a lot of different vacuum pumps out there from a lot of different manufacturers, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people using vacuum pumps for the wrong purposes, which causes them to die faster, to have more issues, not pull full vacuum, not perform, the whole nine yards. So today we're going to talk about which pumps you'd want to use for different applications specific to our industry's processing needs. So the first pump we're going to talk about today is this one over here on the bench. This is a Welch DryFast 2047 pump. It's a diaphragm pump with uh, two diaphragms. Um, essentially this one is a pump in a box for an easy term. We've got the inlet on the side here. And then we've got the outlet on the back. So if you look, we actually have this tube coming out. Right now the pump isn't in use, so we wouldn't be too worried. But essentially this tube is always going to be inside of our hood. And the idea is that with the tube in the hood, any, anything that comes through the pump that stays a vapor will go and get exhausted out of the laboratory. So this type of pump is going to be best for filtration. Um, maybe very, very minimal amounts of distillation, like more in the uh, low vacuum range, a little bit above filtration. So basically, this pump is gonna be utilized for filtration purposes, and inside of the hood over here, I'll turn on the light so we can see what's going on, we've got a vacuum manifold system. So if you look, the vacuum manifold is connected to the pump right at the top, and then we've got all these hoses coming off. So the idea is that I can utilize this manifold to throttle different vacuums to different apparatuses like filtration flasks or whatever it is that I'm going to be doing that day in the lab. So this pump, this 2047, is going to be best for filtration. Um, the sister of this pump, which is a 2042, would be more utilized for solvent recovery on smaller scales. So rotovaps, benchtop rotovaps, um, even some medium scale rotary evaporators can use a 2042 pump, which would be a two diaphragm, slightly higher vacuum range. We don't have the exact sister pump, but we do have a um, hide-off pump right here, which is a, I believe it's called the Rotovac, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes. So this pump is a German pump, which is great, and um, Germans make great stuff. Uh, this pump is going to basically be a diaphragm pump specifically for solvent recovery. Both of the pumps we've just spoken about are dry pumps. We're in the lab, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we use dry vacuum pumps for anything that's gonna be a wet application. So specifically solvent recovery, filtration, things that will have molecules and vapors of potential solvents going through. And through that, we wanna make sure that the diaphragm pumps are compatible with whatever solvents we're using. So these pumps right here are compatible with non-polar solvents as well as polar solvents. So alcohols, pentane, um, anything like that. So the key with utilizing them, again, is in a well-ventilated space, preferably plumbing them up to a hood so that we're evacuating any vapors that do go through the pump out of the lab. So now that we've talked about what dry pumps are for, and there's a lot of different types of dry pumps. In fact, you know, one more we have in our laboratory is this Pfeiffer pump down here. So this Pfeiffer pump is a four diaphragm pump. This one actually pulls high vacuum. Um, this is a specialized pump that's specifically for this mass spec instrument that we have here, uh, that we have above. So this is a GCMS. It's a gas chromatograph with a mass spec. Um, the mass spectrometer essentially is a, it, it gives us the ability to test a wide array of different compounds. But it has to be under vacuum constantly to keep moisture out, gases, and to help maintain calibration. So this pump is on full time, all the time. And believe it or not, there's actually inside of here, there's a turbo molecular pump. I can hear it, I don't know if you can, um, but there's a uh, turbo molecular pump inside of our mass spot, inside of the mass spec part of this, which keeps ultra high vacuum. So this is a completely dry application over here, dry pump, turbo molecular, because there's no molecules moving around. So now that we've gone over those types of pumps, the last type of pump we're gonna talk about today is a wet vacuum pump, or otherwise known as a rotary vein pump, which are probably the most commonly used pumps in our space being hemp and cannabis. So a wet vacuum pump, a rotary vein pump, is an oil-based pump. It's got a large oil reservoir on the, on the back end here, which as you can see is filled about 50% up the sight glass with uh, oil, which is between the min and max. We're gonna wanna make sure that these pumps always have oil in them when you're operating them. If they don't have oil in them, they are out essentially operating dry. It's almost like spinning your motor on, uh, in your car without any oil in it, which will quickly seize the motor. So you wanna, the parts would expand and 
because of the heat without any um, lubricant and can seize. So this keeps it lubricated as well as helps actually create vacuum because the way the veins work inside of this, they spin and they create displacement areas. Those displacement areas are what the oil fills with and then as it's pushed out, that's where the vacuum is created. So essentially we have the inlet here, we have the exhaust here. Typically we'd always wanna have an exhaust filter on a vacuum pump, but mine got clogged and it's actually getting serviced right now, um, which you wanna do regularly as well. But the idea is that the mists that come out of this contain harmful vapors, ones that could be carcinogenic, an array of other things. Um, the oil mist is gonna be comprised of things that boil off from the highly fractionated pump oil itself, as well as whatever's in the system. These pumps are great for pulling deep vacuum. You can use them in wet applications, but you'd never want to use this on solvent recovery or on filtration, because in all reality, you're going to be sucking solvent directly into your oil reservoir, which is going to basically make the pump ineffective. It's going to change the specific gravity of the pump oil, yielding a non-performing pump, potential damage to the pump, whole nine yards. So these pumps are going to be ideally suited for applications that you know, might have some vapor load, but typically are you know, gonna operate at a higher vacuum range. Or for evacuation of large vessels, these are great for that as well. So we use these on our benchtop SPD systems. We use this on our um, thin film systems. They're gonna be used on an array of different types of distillation systems. They work great. Our advanced pump exchange program kind of mitigates the downtime associated with rotary vane pumps because sometimes you know, when the pump breaks, you know, you're not gonna be able to do distillation. So either having a backup or being able to quickly replace the pumping module is key. So keep an eye out for our, you know, our advanced exchange program. So, you know, basically these pumps are fantastic. We have a whole bunch of different ones that we've, you know, personally put our ETL and CSA listing on. Um, you know, it, this right here would be the cold trap that's protecting that pump. With this type of pump, we want to use a cold trap because then we're going to keep all the stuff that would go into the vacuum pump in here. And Cross International was generous enough to uh, let us use one of these in the lab. It's a T80X. Still trying to put it through its paces, but so far it's so good. Uh, wet vacuum pumps and dry vacuum pumps are both extremely crucial in a laboratory. As you can see, I've got four different kinds just right in front of you. Um, all are going to be geared towards a different purpose. Low vacuum, medium vacuum, high vacuum, and then also high vacuum. So these two pumps technically are both high vacuum pumps. Yes, sure, I could use that pump on my benchtop SPD, but you better believe that pump is expensive, and I do not want to ruin it with the crap that comes out of a benchtop SPD. And when I say crap, I'm referring to volatile compounds, terpenes, incondensables, gums, whatever happens to be in that vapor stream that makes it into the pump. With this type of pump, I can change the oil and remove the contamination, whereas with that one, I would have to basically, the diaphragms would have to be replaced which could be costly depending on the pump. I guess the last point I'll make, and we did this last week actually as a hump day hack verbally, but it's the gas ballast. So I can actually point at it and show it here. The gas ballast is this switch here on this pump. So that switch, when, it's, when the gas ballast is closed, the pump is operating under its optimal conditions to reach high vacuum, and it's pushing any vapors into the pump oil. When we open the gas ballast, what it does, it actually lets air into the the oil chamber and the veins so that basically the partial pressure is increased due to these air molecules being present, which forces any vapors that come through to stay as a vapor rather than condensing because their pressure is higher, similar to the temperature being higher, right? And essentially those get ejected out of the exhaust port. So it's very good to be doing that, if, especially when you're running a benchtop SPD um, and you're in the terpene or heads fraction, I typically leave my gas ballast open the whole time. If I'm using a rotary vein pump for terpene stripping on a white film, I'd probably want to ensure that my gas ballast is open. But there's one other thing to think about. If I'm shooting out all of these things, all these compounds that would normally condense inside of my pump oil, if I'm shooting those into my exhaust line, my exhaust line may end up having condensate in it, and so could my exhaust filter. So that's something that you might have to service more often. You might have to clean out your exhaust line slash your exhaust filter if you do run that way. In a nutshell, there's a lot of different vacuum pumps. In fact, we're gonna be having some new vacuum pump technology that we're gonna release with one of our uh, manufacturing partners really soon. Really excited to tell you guys about that. But until then, happy hump day, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the hack. We'll be having more coming. Thank you.